it's a real pleasure for me to be here to announce the winner of the Stein Rockham Prize for Comparative Social Research for the year 2021. The fact that it is a joint award means that it is not an award only in political science. This means that the winner is a book that should have given a fundamental path-breaking contribution to the development of social sciences. This means that uh, the criteria for eligibility cover all those books published in the two previous years that has been capable to propose a path-breaking research, an excellent research, a innovative research in any field of social sciences. This year, the jury has been composed by Pepper Culpepper from the University of Oxford, by Hannah Schlander from the University of Berlin, by Marina Costalobo from the University of Lisbon, and by Gunnar Grenstand from the University of Bergen. This year, it has been very, very difficult for the jury that I have been the honor to chair to decide the winner. We had, uh, we received uh, almost 20 good applications. We have shortlisted five excellent books. At, at the end, after a very, very interesting and deep debate among the members of the jury, we have decided that uh, the award should be given to the book uh, City, State, Constitutionalism and the Mega City, written by Ryan Irshul from the University of Toronto, but actually, actually working also in, in Germany, is a great book capable to present a very, very original reading of the role the, of mega cities from a political science, sociological and the low perspective to show how big cities now we stand in the relevance for the development uh, in, in, in a state, in a society, cannot have enough protection from the constitutional point of view to deal with all the potential powerful stakeholders. We, I would really recommend to read this book because it will be, I would say, a book capable to indicate a fundamental future stream of research. And now I'm very pleased to leave the floor to the representative of the International Science Council. First of all, congratulations to Ram Pesho on his achievement and original research contribution. It's great to hear about a book that addressed such a critical issue from a comparative perspective. The International Science Council, the IESC, is honored to join the University of Bergen and the European Consortium for Political Research in awarding this prize in memory of the political scientist and our friend, sociologist Stein Rokan. To add a personal note, Stein Rokan was responsible for my first publication in English. When I was a graduate student in political science at MIT, I presented a paper at an IPSA Congress and soon after he invited me and my co-author to publish in the International Science of Social Sciences. But more important is that Stein Rokan was president of the ISC's predecessor, the International Social Science Council from 1973 to 1977. The International Social Science Council merged with the International Council for Social Science, ICSU, to form the International Science Council. During this time, Alberto Martinelli, the last president of the International Social Science Council, emphasized the role of the social science in our new organization when he said that the ISSC is starting a new life as a nipple partner with ICSU within a more powerful and influential world science organization. And the Alberto Martinelli words ring true today. Never has there been a more important time for all science as equal partners to come together to navigate the urgent and wicked challenges of our time. 
Steinwald Kahn would have described our times as a critical juncture in history, and there is no doubt that the social and political levers that Rokan explored are playing out in front of our very eyes. Only by bringing the voices of cross-disciplinary science together can we address these challenges. On behalf of the International Science Council, I commend again Ron Hirschel on his achievement, and we hope that his body of work, like that of Stein Rokan, can inspire a new generation of social scientists who together with all scientists can inform transformative political and wider societal response to today's challenge. Success in realizing these opportunities will depend on increased collaboration within and beyond the international scientific community on integration of relevant knowledge across national and disciplinary boundaries and on open engagement between scientists. Well, also scientists, decision makers, policy shapers, business leaders, local community, and the media. We hope that Han Hirschels will join us in realizing this success. Congratulations again for myself and the International Science Council. I'm very glad to see such an important topic addressed. I know it's a great book. I look forward to reading it. Thank you. Stan Rockon was a pioneer of comparative political and social science research and an organizer and administrator in international political science and social science. Rockon was born in 1921, exactly 100 years ago, in the peripheral north of Norway. He studied political philosophy at the University of Oslo, and in 1966, after research at Columbia University, Chicago, and the London School of Economics, he was appointed professor of political sociology at the University of Bergen, with a special responsibility for developing the field of comparative politics. Bergen was his base for the rest of his career. Stein Rockan was a true comparativist, dealing with big questions and messy realities. He was especially interested in the formation of political parties, party systems, and European nation states. Peter Flora's overview of Rockon's life work points out that the unity of Rockon's work stems from his constant concern with the European nation state and its democratization. With Seymour Lipset, Rockon introduced critical juncture theory. Key themes include the big discontinuous changes such as the Reformation, the building of nations, and the Industrial Revolution, and reflecting conflicts organized around social cleavages, such as the center periphery, state church, land industry, and owner worker cleavages. In turn, these big discontinuous changes could be seen as critical junctures because they generated social outcomes that subsequently remained frozen for extensive periods of time. During the 1970s, Rockan worked on the development of conceptual maps of Europe. The maps summarized the principles of geopolitical differentiation within Europe. Rockan was also a great builder of institutions, holding leadership positions in several, notably as chairman of the ECPR, which he helped establish. Rockan also pioneered data archives. In 1976, he participated in establishing SESTA, an umbrella organization for European National Social Science Data Archives. As I mentioned, Stein Rockon was a comparativist who dealt with big questions and messy realities. The same can be said of Van Herschel's book, City State, Constitutionalism and the Megacity. The work is original, innovative, and deeply comparative. It too engages with big questions and messy realities. Herschel's book is the same at the same time both truly global and truly comparative. It is a demonstration of how a legal and constitutional perspective can grasp relevant political and policy dynamics. As the Price Committee reports, Herschel's analysis utilizes a range of methods and spans several continents, many countries, and then 195 national constitutions in effect at the end of 2019. His discussions move easily and seamlessly between precincts, urban areas, agglomerated megacities, provinces, countries, and continents. 
In the same way, Svokan moved seamlessly across centuries and between counties, regions, empires on the European continent. Sven Rokkan is one of the most excellent scientists ever to have worked at the University of Bergen. He passed away too early in 1979 at the young age of 58. The University of Bergen is proud to co-sponsor and contribute to the Sven Rokkan Prize for Comparative Social Science Research, a prize that has been awarded since 1981. Van Herschel's book, City, State, Constitutionalism and the Megacity, is awarded a prize in 2021 for its intellectual originality, its global reach, and its identification and analysis of a real world problem of impressive dimensions. The University of Bergen congratulates Rand Herschels on the book and the prize. Thank you. First of all, let me begin by saying that I'm deeply grateful to the ISC to the ECPR, to the University of Bergen, to the members of the jury for um, doing a great job here and for all their support for comparative social science research over the years. It is a tremendous honor to be the recipient of the Stein Rocken Prize for Comparative Social Research uh, for 2021 for my book, City State. I studied, if I may be uh, slightly sentimental, I studied, like many others, uh, Rockan's uh, path-breaking work on comparative politics, both as an undergraduate student at Tel Aviv University and as a graduate student at Yale University. And in this book, I was trying my best to follow the path-breaking scholarship of Rockan in addressing a bold, underexplored, under-theorized um, question, a big question, I think, in trying to address that using um, multiple methods and being truly comparative and interdisciplinary. And in that way, I hope I was able to contribute somewhat to the great legacy of uh, one of the greatest social scientists of um, all time. Now, let me say a few words about the book itself. So, um, the book addresses a fun what I regard as a fundamental void, the great constitutional silence concerning urbanization and the rise of the megacity. The 21st century has been hailed as the century of the city, and the figures behind this reality are mind-boggling. Consider that a century ago, only one in 10 people lived in an urban area. Today, for the first time in recorded human history, the majority of the world's population lives in cities. This shift marks a major and unprecedented transformation of the organization of society, both spatially and geopolitically. The ever-expanding urbanization trend arguably is uh, the most significant demographic trend of our time is set to continue. The forecast for 2030 or even 2050, let alone for the end of the 21st century, range from the disturbing to the near dystopian and projections suggest that megacities of 50 million or even 100 million inhabitants um, will emerge by the end of the century, mostly in the global south. So despite this uh, daunting reality, cities have remained virtually absent from interdisciplinary study of law and comparative politics. And the main take home message of the book is that in the face of this mounting urban challenge, the silence of constitutional law and of comparative politics on the urban challenge is deafening, and we need to address the issue head on in the coming years. Specifically, what I try to do in the book is to, um, is to accomplish a number of things. I address the status or perhaps non-status of cities in uh, world constitutions. I explore the reasons for the what I call constitutional silence on the urban challenge. 
I suggest that the Westphalian notion of our, that um, dominates our spatial imagination in designing institutions ought to be revisited and we need to gradually adapt to the new reality whereby the vast majority of the world population lives in cities and move away gradually from a statist uh, understanding, from an exclusive statist understanding of the spatial organization of society uh, and the political organization of society. I suggest that we desperately need novel thinking about constitutionalism, urbanization, and uh, uh, metropolis. What I try to do more specifically is to um, move in the second part of the book towards some um, exploration of the politics of uh, um, constitutional empowerment or disempowerment of cities, and then to suggest a new range of arguments, some first order normative arguments and some second order practical arguments for why cities are ought to be given enhanced power constitutionally and politically, for why um, major challenges of the 21st century, including the environmental challenge, may be addressed in a more effective way via um, bringing the city and its residents to the bargaining table, politically speaking. And I conclude by offering some, what I hope are innovative constitutional and institutional designs for mitigating the so-called urban-rural divide that has proven one of the most significant new challenges in contemporary politics around the world. So overall, the bold take-home message of the book, all said and done, and the book traverses really, as, 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 as was suggested before, a wide comparative terrain. It goes from Mexico City and Dhaka and Nairobi and South Africa to the major cities of uh, North America and Europe and back to Asia and et cetera, and Latin America. Uh, the, the bottom line take-home message of the book is that the time has come for scholars of comparative politics and scholars of public law to pay attention to the urban challenge and to the be begin to think creatively on how to address it scholastically, in terms of institutional design, in terms of enhancing political voice, and in terms of bringing the issue to the fore of our collective attention. Thank you. As I have said before, this year the jury has received a bunch of very interesting books. So the jury has decided to give the honorable mention to the book Inside the Mind of a Voter, written by Michael Bruter and Sarah Harrison, that is an incredibly interesting book based on psychological assumptions uh, mixed to a political science perspective, focusing on what election means for the citizens, what the election means for those who are voting. And this represents a very innovative uh, new way to focus on political elections. So the interest is not as usual on electoral outcomes, but on the real meaning that the act to vote represents for the voters. So at the end, I would like to uh, say thanks uh, uh, to all of you, and I would like to congratulate again uh, to Ron Kirschel, 